Hey there, Scoobies. As beloved as many of the characters are in Buffy, there are a few that no matter what they do seem to be hated by the fandom. Now, I often jump to Sanders' defence, but today, it's Dawn that I'd like to talk about. If you're going out, why don't you take your sister? Mom! Dawn was introduced in Season 5 in what can only be described as a jarring retcon. I'll forgive you for being a little bit defensive just for that. The showrunners just decided to give Buffy a little sister and pretend like she'd been there all along. Of course, since its initial airing, we've come to realise that there had been a little bit more forethought on the subject. Oh, you have to go. That's just with little sis coming. I know. But, that aside, I appreciate that Dawn was an exceedingly childish character for much of the fifth season. She tends to come across as needy and petulant when she doesn't get her way, and there's a lot of shrill screaming that's like nails on a chalkboard. Get out! Get out! Get out! And despite being just a couple of years younger than Buffy was in season one, she doesn't seem to have even close to the same level of maturity or self-preservation of the other Scoobies. Sorry, what was I saying again? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you're wrong for not liking Dawn. Before I get into my reasons why you're wrong, I will say that it's perfectly okay to not like a character. It's kind of the point to a degree. But I'll get to that. There are a couple of parts to this. Firstly, let's talk about the physical ages of the actors. Michelle Trachtenberg was about 15 years old when she was cast as Dawn and she was playing a 14-year-old, while Sarah Michelle Gellar was 17, playing a 16-year-old. This doesn't seem like a dramatic difference, but during these teenage years, we grow up fast. Secondly, Dawn was originally meant to be a few years younger, but they aged her character up so that she'd more closely resemble Michelle's age. I think some of this was still inherent in the script and the writing, for example. My friend Sharon's older brother knows a girl who died because she choked on her boyfriend's tongue. Go away, Don. I'm not in your room. I'm in the hallway. The hallway doesn't belong to you. These aren't for eating. I'm just trying to get the extra out of the way so I could... Get this. He says I'm like a kid's sister. Here come the judge. But sometimes, when he looks at me, I feel like he sees me as I am. As a woman. This segues me to the next element that needs to be considered when talking about Dawn. She was originally an interdimensional key. She was incorporeal and had no sentience or personality. For centuries, it had no form at all. Then, with a snap, she was a person. And the snap was dreamt up by a bunch of monks. We'll get to their reasons in a moment, but let's consider that this was a teenage girl created from the lens of adult, one assumes, celibate men. Gave it form, molded it flesh, made it human, and sent it to you. Taken away from the inherent biases that one could consider about this, we should also consider that due to glory, this was somewhat of a rush job. Now let's talk about their reasoning. You must protect the key. Many more die if you don't keep it safe. We knew the Slayer would protect. They needed the Slayer to protect the key. Ironically, the fate of the world was apparently not motive enough. Because of this, Dawn needed to be more than a mission or a quest to Buffy. She needed to do anything to save her. In a nutshell, she needed to love her. Part of the route into adult responsibility for many is being an older sibling. So what better way to get the Slayer to take on this mantle than to give her a little sister? For those of us with younger siblings, you can appreciate that there is no one that annoys you more than your little brothers and sisters. It is this that sells the illusion. I bet you know where she put it, don't you? She doesn't know anything. I know some stuff. But there was one thing the monks couldn't have accounted for. The thing that sealed the deal. Mom? Mom? Mommy? Joyce's death meant that Buffy was enforced to take on the role of mum. This allowed her to understand the role of protector in a way that she never had done before. In this way, Dawn becomes integral to Buffy's journey into adulthood. They are thrust into a mother-daughter relationship that neither one of them were prepared for, making Dawn's inclusion one of the most integral aspects of Buffy's growth. This leads into Buffy's understanding of what her place as a slayer really means. Death is your gift. But that's for another video. If you're not convinced yet, let's take a look at Dawn post-season 5. Much of the issues relating to Dawn come from her introduction, but as we move into season 6, Dawn is developed beyond that of a MacGuffin, this allows her to explore aspects of being a teen and her own growth into adulthood. In many ways, Dawn's own experiences feel more realistic than Buffy's, as unlike her older sister, she makes many mistakes. Oh yeah? Come inside and say that! Dawn gets fooled by the charms of Charismatic Boy. She looks to kleptomania to test that there are actually consequences to her actions. She looks to relationships around her for validation. And finally, 
she gets to fight for the right of survival. Buffy talks in the final episode of Showing the World to Dawn, but I would argue that over the course of this season, she's seen it herself. I don't want to protect you from the world. I want to show it to you. As we enter into the final season, so too does Dawn enter into the final stages of high school like Buffy before her. There's a symmetry between the early seasons and this finale where Dawn retreads Buffy's steps, as does every new generation. The thing that makes Dawn's journey different from Buffy's is the one true realisation, that she's not special. You thought you were all special, Miss Sunnydale 2003. Where Buffy was led on a journey of discovery and empowerment, in understanding that she had a part to play in the grand arena beyond that of the cards she was dealt by the council or those dealt by fate, Dawn's journey is the ying to Buffy's yang. Her journey proves that she isn't special, that she is no more than a cog in the machine. This is equally important, but for very different reasons. Dawn has to understand that as we are important in our own right, equally, we are the cogs that make the greater whole. This is presented to us in the episode Chosen, where Dawn realises that she isn't a potential slayer, but despite that, it doesn't mean that she can't help the potential. This is important as it reminds her to look past the lead in our own story complex we often find ourselves in, and to look beyond herself and her own story to understand the importance of sacrifice. As with all the core Scoobies, Dawn still relates back to Buffy herself, her role being that of the future. In season 5, Buffy had to protect her like a baby. In season 6, she learned to be the teacher and show her the world. In season 7, Buffy's job is once again to be that of the protector, but this time in relation to liberty and freedom. She's protecting the next generation. Dawn represents a very human aspect compared with the more supernatural elements of the show. Many of her less than stellar qualities are a reflection of our own. What? You think you've never been annoying? I think in many ways this is part of what attracts Dawn and Connor's ire from the fanbase at large. Generally speaking, each generation has had a bad habit of blaming the next one for its mistakes. Dawn represents the next generation, and to Buffy and the gang it's a stark reminder that they are no longer the up and coming. But, as they once did, others now look to them for wisdom and guidance. And, as annoying as she may come across at times, she has to be that way for Buffy to grow. You don't want to mess with us. She's a hair puller. 